Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Ember Tide, and uh, special, uh, special warm welcome to uh, uh, to those of you who are visiting. I know there are some here because it's a special day. It's uh, not just each Easter, but uh, uh, but also our uh, day that we're going to dedicate a few of our our, our newest uh, members of our church. So it's a special day. So welcome to those of you who are visiting for that purpose. Uh, but also, it's, uh, it's probably the most special of days in our Christian calendar where we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And uh, because of that, that's why we worship, really. And so we're glad that you've come to worship with you. And I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to get right into worship. And we're just going to uh, open with a prayer. I know people are still coming in, but you can come in just quietly as we pray. And then we're going to worship together. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for this, uh, for this day, Lord. We can't thank you enough for, uh, for just what it means to us, Lord, for that awesome, incredible sacrifice. And, Lord, we recognize that because of that, we can, have, we can have communion with you, Lord. We can have a relationship with you, Lord. We can have everlasting life. We have victory, Lord, through you, and we're thankful for that. Uh, Lord, we just pray that today would be so honoring to you, so uplifting to you, and Glorify your name only, Lord. And so we just ask you to bless our efforts and be near to us, Lord, and, uh, and speak to us and teach us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, remain standing. We're going to sing. sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope with no place to be your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only beauty
Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified bowed with their faces to the ground. The men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men to be crucified. may be formed but it won't prosper when the darkness falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle
in us, Lord. We believe it's true. Thank you for removing those chains, Lord. I'm sorry that you had to suffer, Father, but we just, we praise you because of it, Lord. We give you thanks because of it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for leading us, worship team. I hope you came ready to celebrate.
symbol of our united commitment to these families. Please stand and respond to this important question. Ember Tide Church, you commit yourself to doing everything you can in formal roles of service and in informal interactions with the Matthews family and the Cowan family to assist Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Eleanor. We are just so blessed to be able to have this beautiful life in our congregation. And so, Father God, I just ask that you would just put your hand upon the Matthews family, that you would encourage them on those long nights, that you would just uplift them when they feel discouraged, that they would feel blessed by the encouragement that they receive from their church family and their surrounding family. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill their home and that your, that your, your love for them would just overflow into their family as they begin this new stage. I just pray also that you would bless their extended family, both near and far, that as they walk alongside of them, that they would feel the encouragement and the love coming from their extended family as well. Father God, you are so good to give us such beautiful gifts like children. And so we dedicate Eleanor to you this morning. And Eliza, your turn. Easy, easy. Father God, we just pray for Eliza. We are just so thankful for just the way that you have already started to cultivate this wonderful personality within her. That you have given uh, both Jeff and Karina just this wonderful heart to serve you. We just pray that that would fall upon her as well. We just pray that you would protect her and guide her and walk with her as she grows in, in both her knowledge of the world around her and in her knowledge of you. We just pray also that you would give Karina and Jeff patience and love and tenderness and moments where they would just feel your presence in a real and tangible way. We also thank you for their families as well who have committed to walking with them and helping them to raise Eliza. We just pray, God, that she would be blessed by you and that both of these beautiful girls would grow up to accomplish more in your name than we could possibly ask or imagine. And so we commit both of them and we commit Eliza to you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things together. Amen. Amen. I've got a gift for you guys on behalf of the church. Give them a hand. That's a wonderful moment. These are for the kids, all right, parents? All right, Eleanor, here you go. You're welcome, my pleasure. There you go. All right, thank you so much. All right, you guys can have a seat. See ya. Everyone's leaving now. The kids are done, right? We're, we're finished here. <laughs> All right. This isn't my Bible. Where's my Bible? It'll have to do. Oh, it's on the floor. Here, sorry, guys. I was like, that's not my Bible. That's too, that's too big. <clears throat> All right. I don't know, some of you who may not know me don't understand the, the humor in this, but uh, one of the things that I'm not known for is my expertise around uh, tools or being able to build anything, really. Uh, and so one of the things that I have found helpful is Ikea. And Ikea is really fake furniture in a lot of ways, but it is wonderful because what it does is it gives you pictures, right? It gives you illustrations on how to build stuff. And for me, I need all the help I can get when it comes, I'm this guy in the top corner, right? I'm like, hey, Ikea, I need you to come and like make something for me. 
Uh, and so one of the things that's wonderful about Ikea is that they, they give you instructions on and pictures for the next step to take. And so that's what I want to do this morning. As we celebrate Easter, as we think about what Easter might mean for us, I want to provide a picture that will allow us to figure out what next steps to take. And that's where we're going to go this morning. And if you're visiting with us, we have been kind of traveling through the book of Exodus uh, and talking about Moses. And whether you are familiar with the Bible or whether you aren't, uh, you probably have heard the, the story of Moses and the Red Sea. You've seen a movie about it or you've, you've heard about it at some point in time in your life. The, the story of the Red Sea, the crossing of the Red Sea, is not just like a historical moment for us to think about, but it also works as this beautiful picture for us to understand what Easter is all about. And so that's what I want to do this morning. I want to use this, I mean, I get excited about some parts of the Bible, but I am really excited about this passage. I love this part of the story. And so I, I can't wait to share this with you, but it is this act, if you want to divide it up into like a, a trilogy or a three-part play or three different scenes, here are three different acts in the book of Exodus in the story of the crossing of the Red Sea that will help us understand Easter and maybe help us see what next steps we need to take. All right? So that's where we're going. Online, that's where we're going. We're heading into Exodus. If you have your Bibles or your phones, whatever shape, scroll, turn, Exodus chapter 14. That's where we're going to be spending our time this morning. And so here's the stage. Here's the setting. All right? The Israelites have just gotten out of Egypt. They've been released by Pharaoh, and they've wandered a little bit. They've taken a detour to get to the Red Sea. And so they have this uncrossable obstruction in their way. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh realizes, hey, this was stupid. I let my free slave force, build, my building projects are all stopping now because I've let go of my unlimited slave force. So he comes to his mind and he says, all right, assemble the chariots. We're going to get the army together. We are going after these Israelites. We're going to bring them back to Egypt. And so you have the Egyptians pressing down on one side behind the Israelites you have the Red Sea on the other side, and there you have the Israelites smack dab in the middle. And Moses is trying to figure out, what are we going to do? All right, that's the scene. The stage is set. All right, here we go. The first thing that we're going to see, the first act is this, is that Easter brings freedom. Easter brings freedom. Picking up in verse 5 of Exodus chapter 14. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We've let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with them all, and the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea, by the sea near Pi-Hiroth, opposite baal Zephon. All right, so let's stop there for a minute. I want us to just think about for a second, what kind of freedom am I talking about when, when we think about the freedom that the Israelites are experiencing? What kind of freedom are we talking about? What are they leaving behind? And the truth is that what they're leaving behind is the land of Egypt. And you're probably saying, Brandon, that is a no-brainer, right? Of course, they're leaving the land of Egypt. That's the simplest answer. But I want to highlight that. I want to highlight the fact that they're leaving Egypt because what Egypt represents. And I'm going to take a little bit of a rabbit trail here, so just stay with me, all right? But there's, there's a picture in Revelation, and the book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible, and the book of Revelation is a lot of things. But what it mostly is, is it's a book of pictures, it's a book of metaphors, it's a book of similes. And if, if you know what a simile is, it's a, a description without using as or like, or that's a metaphor, similes are using as and like. And what they do is, in Revelation, you'll hear all the time, this is like this, or I saw something that was like this or like this in a way. And so the Bible in Revelation uses like all the time. 
And it's a book of images. And so in Revelation chapter 11, you have this court scene where there are two witnesses who are giving their testimony, talking about Jesus, and this is what it says. And we don't have time to unpack all this, but I just want you to see one thing. And they were testifying, and in verse 7 of chapter 11, it says, Now when they had finished their testimony, the beast that comes from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. And all I want to do by highlighting that verse is just show you that the name Egypt would come to represent something else in the Bible. And we, do, we understand this, right? We, we see this at play. Like, we had child dedications. You notice neither of those beautiful girls were named Jezebel, right? I haven't seen a kid named Jezebel in a long time. Apologies if you're here today and your name is Jezebel. Uh, and I haven't seen any boys named, like, Adolf lately, right? Like, it just doesn't happen. Why? Because there is something associated with those names, right? And it's not good. In the same way, Egypt, the name Egypt in the Bible, would come to represent something more than just this geographical location. And so what I'm trying to point out, what I'm trying to highlight here, is that Egypt would come to represent slavery, death, bondage, evil, basically something that is opposing God. And so when the Israelites are, if you walk it back to our story, so when the Israelites are leaving Egypt, when they have escaped Egypt, what they have escaped is they're not just leaving this geographic location where they were in physical slavery, physical bondage, experiencing physical death, but what that would come to represent. What that comes to represent for us, fast forward to today, what that means for us in the Easter story is the story of Jesus freeing us from all that Egypt would represent. Freeing us from spiritual bondage, spiritual struggle, spiritual death, and opposition to God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says this, speaking of Jesus, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. He's taken us out of Egypt, folks. That's what Easter represents. That's what it helps us understand. One of the most important words in the Bible is the word redemption. And we sang it, the word popped up as we sang it, redemption. And the root of that word means loosening of bonds, loosening of chains. And so when we talk about redemption, we are literally talking about the letting go of things that are keeping us imprisoned. And of course, all of us are like, none of us are slaves here. None of us are imprisoned. And I I would ask you, is that really true? Because some of us are carrying chains of guilt. Some of us are carrying chains of shame. Some of us are carrying chains of feeling like we'll never measure up. Some of us are feeling the chains and the bondage of insecurity and having to earn the love of the people around us. Or maybe always having to perform, always having to look like you've got it all together. We can experience freedom, and we sang about that so wonderfully this morning. Easter means that we experience freedom, redemption, the loosening of those chains. And we celebrate Easter because it brings freedom. The second act. Let's go to the second act. Easter comes by grace. That's the next picture we see. And I love this passage. This one's gold, all right? So if you have your pens or whatever, underline all this stuff. Verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us in the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Don't be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians will see you today and you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. 
you need only be still. Can you see it? Can you, can you see the grace in this moment? Can you see the picture? Remember I said they have this, the Egyptian enemy is now really approaching them and, and the Israelites are starting to get panicked. They're like, listen, we would rather go back to Egypt. We'd rather go back to bondage and darkness and death than die out here in the wilderness. God, what are you doing? Moses, what are you thinking? Everyone's questioning. But God's direction in all of this, don't be afraid. You can just hear him saying, chill out. Just relax. Don't be afraid. Just be still. Apart from Jesus, we are in the same boat. We are in the same boat. We have this uncrossable obstacle in front of us, death and sin in our lives. But there's Easter. Easter is where Jesus makes a way. He makes a way. Pick up verse 24. Oh, sorry, John 5, 24 says this. I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. Jesus has made a way. We don't have to battle the Egyptians. We don't have to battle all that Egypt represents to win God's grace. There is a battle that needed to be fought, but it was not our battle. We don't have to defeat an army. We don't have to keep all the rules. We don't have to live the perfect life. It's a gift. It's a gift. We just need to receive it. And I want to just show you this little gold nugget. This is wonderful. There's a verse there at the end, if you remember, I saying, don't be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the, the Lord will bring you today. That word deliverance up on the screen, I think it's up on the screen, deliverance is the word in Hebrew, the language that the Bible was originally written in, the the word for deliverance is also the word for salvation. And what that word is, is Yeshua. And Yeshua is the name Jesus in Hebrew. And so in this moment, what we're seeing is God saying this, don't be afraid, stand firm, And look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. The third scene is that with Easter, there needs to be a mediator. Easter needs a mediator. Moses is in this hard spot. The Israelites are complaining to him. They've got the Egyptian army coming down on them. And then he says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Well, Moses isn't crying out. It's the Egyptians. But Moses is this mediator. Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his armies, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Sorry. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Coming better, the armies of coming behind them, the armies of Egypt and dark. Sorry, I lost my spot. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on the dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. There was a mediator. Moses was there to stand in the gap. And that's what a mediator does, right? They're the ones who bring two opposing parties together. They're the ones that stand in the middle. And this is what Moses does. And God directs his attention to Moses, and he stands in front of the people. But the only reason they could ever get out of Egypt, the only reason the Israelites were ever even able to experience the freedom that they now have, even at the the banks of the Red Sea, is because of Moses. Because Moses was willing to stand in the gap for them. And the same thing is true for us, that we can't escape hopelessness, slavery, and sin and death on our own. We can only escape those things because Jesus conquered 
hopelessness, slavery, sin, and death when he walked out of that tomb on the very first Easter Sunday. Don't miss the power of this moment, right? Moses is standing before the Red Sea, this uncrossable challenge in front of them. And he stands with his arms outstretched. And the wind blows the waves to one side or the other. And in the Bible, the water would represent chaos and, and things that we can't control, things that have caused destruction. Moses stretched out his hand, and all those things move aside. On Easter, what we celebrate is the fact that Jesus stands before us and provides a way for us to pass through the chaos and the destruction of death and the things that we can't control. And he does that by stretching out his hands on the cross and standing in the gap so that we can walk through. We need the mediator. And there's only one application today as we wrap up. The question that you need to wrestle with and the question that I need to wrestle with that we all are struggling with is, are you willing to walk through that gap? Are you willing to take that next step? Hopefully you've been able to see the illustration of what Easter means, how it's able to come together and how it can impact your life, just like our Ikea photo. But what's your next step going to be? And here's the beautiful part. I can imagine what it was like to go through the walls of water. I can imagine some of the Israelites were like, yeah, this is awesome. God's fantastic. Let's go. And they would walk right through it, nope, with every confidence in the world. But I am positive that there must have been some Israelites who were walking through, looking at the water, just saying, I'm going to die, 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 until they got to the other side. All they could do was just take one more step of faith. And whether you're ready to jump in with both feet into what Jesus is or whether you're trying to take one step forward and take that next right step, there's an opportunity for you to do that. Are you willing to follow Jesus? Because he's the one who moves us from slavery to freedom. Let me pray. Father God, as we think about all that Egypt means for us. That darkness, that, that struggle, Lord, even in our own lives, we can just think about some of the challenges that we face each and every day. Lord, help us to remember what Easter means for us. Help us to remember that Easter means light and hope and redemption and newness of life. For some of us, the thought of following you is a strange and new idea. But Lord, help us to see that with just one more step of faith, that you meet us where we're at, that you speak words of life into our hearts, that we might know you and depend on you and grow in our trust in you. Holy Spirit, walk with us today. If there are those here today who don't know you, I just pray, God, that you would just fall upon them and help them to see their need for you. Help them to see what the next step is. Help us to walk with you. Thank you for Easter. Thank you for the resurrection. Without it, we would have no hope. We pray for this in the name of the risen Savior, Jesus. you the best in the rest of this Easter weekend. You have a wonderful time with your families and uh, just a celebration as we uh, close out our service today. We're going to uh, we're going to end on a high note here. We're going to sing about God's greatness and uh, so why don't we stand up together and we'll sing together.
God, we give you thanks for all that you've done, Lord. We, we, saying great things is, is just, just doesn't seem like enough, Lord. Uh, we can't express how, how good you are to us, Father. Um, pray that you are pleased with today, Father, and we just pray that as we leave here today, we would just be ever mindful of that great sacrifice, Lord. It would just compel us, Father, to want to spread the good news of the gospel, Lord. trigger that in our hearts, Lord, that we just want to spread that message, that good news, Lord. Go with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.